हेलो व्यूअर्स वेलकम बैक टू श्री स्वामीनारायण फिजियोथेरापी कॉलेज यूट्यूब चैनल दिस इज डॉक्टर ख्याति शाह एंड योर आई एम गोइंग टू शो यू हाउ वेल यू असेस क्रेनियल नर्व एट नाइन टेन इलेवन एंड ट्वेल्व डू फॉलो द लिंक्स इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स फॉर माई प्रीवियसली अपलोडेड वीडियोज टू लर्न अबाउट न्यूरो असेसमेंट हायर मेंटल फंक्शन असेसमेंट एंड अदर क्रीनियल नर्व एग्जामिनेशन सो बिफोर आई स्टार्ट विथ माई प्रेजेंटेशन I would like to request all the viewers to like, share and subscribe our YouTube channel so that you get a notification whenever a new video is uploaded. So now starting with cranial nerve examination. We will start assessing the eighth cranial nerve that is the vestibular cochlear nerve. It is a purely sensory nerve for hearing and balance. To assess the auditory component a simple test is done with the patient in sitting position. We have to cover one of the patient's ear at a time. Near open ear, whisper numbers and ask the patient to repeat that numbers. Repeat the same with another ear. I whisper numbers from this side. In case we observe any deficits from the above test, Rini's test and Weber's test are done. Now for any test patient is in sitting position we can use 256 or 512 hertz tuning fork strike the tuning fork and place on the patient's mastoid process patient has to inform once they stop hearing the buzzing sound the fork is then immediately moved in front of the external auditory meatus to find out whether they can still hear the sound or not normally air conduction is greater than bone conduction So sound should be audible in second step even if it is subsided in first step. In conductive deafness bone conduction is greater than air conduction and in nerve deafness both are impaired. Now for Weber's test it is done by keeping the tuning fork on the patient's vertex. We have to ask the patient whether he or she can hear in both the ears or not or is there any difference. In conductive deafness sound is louder in the affected ear and in nerve deafness sound is louder in the normal ear. Now for the vestibular component the commonly used tests are Barini's chair rotating test caloric test and galvanic nystagmus the nystagmus produced during these tests will give an idea about the integrity of the vestibular division of the eighth nerve we will start assessing the ninth and tenth cranial nerve that is the glossopharyngeal and vagus nerve both these nerves are commonly assessed together they primarily innervate the muscles of the tongue and pharynx patient may report difficulty in swallowing so note any swallowing difficulty or nasal regurgitation of fluids ask the patient to open the mouth and say ah note any asymmetry of the palatal movements say ah ah note patient's voice a high pitched voice may indicate vagus nerve impairment lastly the gag reflex can be assessed using tongue depressor touch the back of the tongue on both the sides and check for the gag reflex hmm. next the 11th cranial nerve that is the accessory nerve the 11th cranial nerve innervates the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius muscle now to assess the trapezius muscle patient is in sitting position and inspect the neck area If no atrophy is apparent ask her to shrug the shoulders and hold them in the same position against resistance your shoulders yes next to assess the sternocleidomastoid muscle ask the patient to rotate head against resistance on both the directions compare power and muscle bulk on each side Next, twelfth cranial nerve, that is the hypoglossal nerve. The last in the twelfth cranial nerve 
innervates the tongue muscles and is responsible for voluntary tongue movements. Ask the patient to open the mouth and inspect the tongue. Look for evidence of atrophy and fibrillation. Open the mouth. Relax. Ask the patient to protrude the tongue and note any difficulty or deviation. Protruded tongue deviates towards the side of weakness. Bring your tongue out. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next lecture on sensory examination. And once again, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe our YouTube channel. Thank you all.